The Brave browser is very new to the browser scene, but they are seriously making a huge dent in the market. Not only promising insanely fast speeds to beat out Chrome and Firefox, but also security and privacy built in by default for the user. Is this all just hype, or is there something to it, and why is our channel now switched over to Brave? Well, you gotta go watch. You gotta watch to find out. Let's talk about the browser and leave Bat out of this video as it's its own can of worms. We'll talk about them another day. Brave is built on Chromium, which is kind of a double-edged sword. You're getting Chromium's intense security, good speed, and ideally Brave is stripping the privacy concerns related to Google. The main reason it's a double-edged sword is you're supporting Chromium, which is now taking over almost every browser. We're at the point that only Firefox and Safari are the other alternatives to Chromium. So Brave does feed the Chromium frenzy. That's the downside. It sucks. But there are positives to that. Brave supports most, if not all, Chrome extensions. It looks almost exactly like Chromium that would come from Google's site, making it an easy switch for people reluctant to switch from Chrome. And being based on Chromium gives it familiar settings and features offered in Chrome, which is also not as susceptible to sites breaking and freaking out like a hardened Firefox. I'm looking at you, Google Captchas. So Chromium, double-edged sword, but Brave does eliminate the standard concerns with Chromium, which involve user privacy. Moving into the browser itself, the homepage is very cleverly designed as it'll give you your stats on things Brave has done for you in the background, which I really enjoy. Uh, you'll see a Brave logo in your Omni bar. This is your shield, and it will show what it's doing in the background in terms of blocking ads, trackers, analytics, upgrading HTTPS requests, and other things that are improving your security and privacy on the internet. This requires no configuration, is dirt simple, and works perfectly out of the box. Into settings, it'll feel just like any other version of Chrome. You'll find all your standard settings, shield settings, which you can configure to be slightly more advanced. You can choose what major social media to block. It has DuckDuckGo and Start Page as built-in search engines, which is very cool. You'll see other media-oriented things like Hangout support, WideVine, WebTorrent, and Chromecast support. The advanced settings are almost identical to Chromium. Again, overall, outside of Brave exclusive features, you're looking at Chrome. Now, before summarizing my experience using the browser, there are two more features I wanted to highlight that Brave offers. The first is its Tor private mode, which opens essentially an incognito window that routes your traffic through Tor. This sounds cool, but in my opinion, it's kind of a gimmick, but there's still kind of a use case. Tor is an anonymity network designed to take people and make them look exactly the same. This is normally achieved by people using the same browser with a common fingerprint, such as the Tor browser, which is designed to make users look the same, or an operating system like Tails, which is a little bit more sophisticated. With Brave's Tor mode, you're not getting this. All you're getting is an IP address change within that browser window, and you get access to Onion sites. That's really about it. It's a small use case, but I'm still happy to see it mostly just to normalize Tor usage and remove the stigma that you need to be an anonymous hacker with a hoodie and a black mask to use Tor, which is just pff, false. The second feature, and it's probably my favorite, is Brave Sync, which allows you to sync data across different devices without an account. No Google, no Firefox, nothing, just a QR code. Currently, this is limited to bookmarks only, but they are planning to expand this down the road. Normally, this level of convenience requires a sacrifice of direct personal information, such as an email, but not with Brave. I've been using Chromium for a long time on the channel. Keep in mind, this is all channel talk, not my personal life. And that's because A, I use YouTube, and YouTube is Google, and Google unfairly makes Chromium faster on its website over Firefox, as well as having better support. I had lots of issues uploading and managing my content in YouTube Creator Studio with Firefox, but none of these issues happened with Chromium. The second reason is convenience. The channel's threat model is all about security, not so much privacy, and the reason for that is I make public YouTube videos. Almost everything I do on my business devices ends up becoming published directly, publicly, for the world to see. Google has amazing security, terrible privacy, and Chromium offers convenient syncing of bookmarks and browser data 
across my devices with fantastic browser speeds, making it a clear win for a browser to use for channel business. Now, just to clear it up before someone leaves a comment, I do value privacy on a moral level, so obviously if there's a way of making things more private without sacrificing what the channel can accomplish, I'm going to take that route. Which is why I'm so grateful for Brave, because it does everything Chromium does, but without all the drawbacks. I've been using it now for almost a couple months, and overall it's been great. It's fast, it's functional, and it's a browser. It's, it's just a browser. <laughs> Not to mention, I don't have to worry about basic security and privacy issues. It takes care of most of them for me. The only complaint is Brave Sync is a very early feature and it has a lot of issues. A lot of times I'll get the same bookmarks saved twice, folder modifications I make on one device don't really carry over to others, and just lots of little issues, but it works albeit not always fantastically. I think that everyone who's using Chrome, Vivaldi, anything else that's not Firefox could be using Brave and it would benefit them in some way and you'll likely have a great experience using it because it's a good browser. The people that this browser are especially good for are the non-tech savvy people. If you're trying to get your family members to stop using Chrome, this is probably the best solution for them, almost hands down. It's familiar, faster, better, and offers pretty much all of the same stuff. Now, who is Brave not for? Brave is not for the person looking for the utmost security and privacy on the internet. Brave doesn't have the best ad and tracker blocker, it doesn't have the best fingerprinting protection, it simply is not the best at protecting your security and privacy. As of today, hardened Firefox will take that crown home almost every time. But Brave competes, it does better than almost every browser out of the box, and it doesn't need configuration like a hardened Firefox. So what's my case for Brave? I do not think it offers the most secure and private experience to the user, but I think it gets close with minimal effort and really no drawback to the consumer. Brave is fundamentally breaking the rules of our convenience line, which in my eyes makes it an absolute success as a project despite its current shortcomings. I promise I'm not sponsored by Brave to say any of this, but if you want to support the channel and you want to give Brave a shot, we do have a referral link in the description which will benefit us at absolutely no cost to you. You can also donate that directly to us through our website, our channel, and other accounts as well. It, it's really cool. I love the way that Bat tips. There's also a normal link in the description to Brave's website. Please don't feel pressured to click our link. Use theirs if you want to. It's just a way to support us if you choose to. Don't forget about our communities, which are a lot of fun, so make sure to join them. And don't forget to watch Go Incognito, which is your ultimate guide to security and privacy, which is currently walking through how to harden Firefox. So if you want to go that route, keep an eye out for Go Incognito and subscribe for all the future lessons that are coming out. That's it. Thanks for watching and have a lemurious day.